Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we are checking out the Miltech Simulation CH47 Chinook. They've done an absolutely amazing job with this helicopter, although there are a few issues here and there, but I'll let you guys spot them out. But uh, today we're just going to walk through the startup, go through a quick flight around the Alaskan area, and then bring it back in and just sort of see how it handles in comparison to other helicopters. Now, tandem blade helicopters do offer significantly more stability than some of the uh, uh, single rotor helicopters that we are used to. Um, and I think you guys are going to see a lot of that. This will be my second flight in the aircraft. So I will be giving you guys sort of a second impressions, if you will. We're not going to be going through any of the missions that are available for this particular helicopter in this video, but we will be showcasing those as they're pretty freaking awesome. Today's just going to be about flying the helicopter and some of the features that are available to it. So without further delay, let's go ahead and get started. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining us on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future releases that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. Alright guys, so as we jump into the helicopter, let's go ahead and start with the EFB. Come down here, power it on, let's see what kind of options we have here. So first off, let's start with just the map. You do have a full top top down view of the area available from directly from the EFB. If I can freaking talk with different layer options as well, if you choose. One of the other really cool things here is you can completely change the loadout directly from here. As far as your cargo goes, you have your fuel load mission options, which we'll talk about in another video, guys. But uh, you guys can see there's quite a few different uh, capabilities here. We have uh, firefighting. We have rescue operations, hoisting operations, and military exercise. So quite a few different cool things here. All the doors can be accessed directly from the tablet. And everything can also be accessed from inside of the aircraft. So the ability to move around at will and even come down and see the hoist load. So pretty slick the way they've done things here. I really appreciate it. All right, so now let's go ahead and walk through the startup process. Now I'm not gonna do the pre-start, we're just gonna get right into the power startup and engine start. So let the games begin, folks. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go battery to the on position. We're gonna set the APU over to run and then over to start. When the APU moves from the start switch to the run position, we'll turn on the APU gen. All right, and now APU gen to on. Hydraulic transfer switches on, power transfer switches. And then, let's see here, make sure our parking brake is set. It is indeed. We need the FADEC backup power, goes to the on position. Engine control levers, make sure they're both in the stop position. We'll come up and turn the EAPS fans on, so doors open, fan on, door open, fan on. Come back down and now we're going to get into the engine start sequence now we're going to go up left main fuel pumps go to on that's the center switches here cross feed switch goes to the open position left uh condition lever goes to the ground position and engine start switches goes over to engine one Soon as left engine oil pressure exceeds 7%, we can come up and move it over to the flight position. And wait for the engine to go idle.
Okay. And now we will rinse and repeat for engine two. After we turn the left generator on. Ah! What happened to my camera view? Thank you. Stupid thing. I hate it when it does this crap. All right. So generator one goes to the on position. And then now we will rinse and repeat. Engine two goes to ground. Engine start switch goes to two. Monitoring that oil pressure. There's 7%. Coming back up. Go to flight. Engine two, gen on. Start switch back to centered. APU generator off. Looking groovy. All right, let's go to the after start sequence. All fuel pumps go to on. We also would have set our lights accordingly. I did miss that in the pre-start. Shame on me. Every time I go to skip it, every time I go to skip something, it comes back and bites me. Which, it's almost like, and don't, before anyone says it, I know. It's like the checklists are there for a reason. I know. <laughs> I didn't say I wasn't guilty. Set our barometric pressure. We can now release our parking brake. And we are ready to go for a test flight. So, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to switch over to the Pimax Crystal so I can tell you guys also how it performs in virtual reality. All right, let's fly it. Make sure the power steering is turned on. We're just going to add a little bit of collective. Getting used to taxing a helicopter is a little weird, not going to lie. So far, its performance inside the crystal is fantastic. Now, this is my first time in the crystal with this particular aircraft, and I see no issues with it. The reason why I definitely wanted to do VR with a helicopter, nothing beats helicopter experience uh, than virtual reality. Uh, VR, you know, obviously you get the depth perception, and that is just absolutely crucial to, uh, well, any flight simulation really, but definitely uh, for VR. Or, um, yeah, in VR. And in helicopters, is what I was going to say. I am really impressed with this uh, with this helicopter. It is really quite fantastic. And I think I actually zigged when I should have zagged. I turned it the wrong direction. Oops. <laughs> well, we'll taxi to this helo pad right here and then we'll take off. <laughs> My bad.
I will say in VR or out of VR, the click spots need some work. The click spots are a little bit of a pain in the butt in this thing. All right, so let's go ahead and just start adding some collective. I'm gonna hold my wheel brakes. Pull some aft cyclic. And like I said, with a tandem rotor helicopter, you have significantly better stability. So there's our hover check. Now let's pick it up. And it's absolutely a stunning flight in this thing. I have found that you need a bit more rudder, if you will. It's not anti-torque anymore, it's just yaw. As there is no anti-torque uh, rotor on this helicopter. But I have found it's definitely much more of a balance of pedal and cyclic. To sort of navigate uh, this helicopter around. But once you get it where you want it, it's uh, quite stable. The trim works very, very nicely in this helicopter. There she is. And this hands off the controls here. Absolutely beautiful. They did a great job setting that up. Flies extremely nice. What I like to do with helicopters always is to scrape the treetops. Probably should watch that vertical speed a bit. But it is a very, very forgiving helicopter. Very forgiving helicopter. Now let's have some fun. Sneak attack. Dropping some seals into combat in the middle of Alaska? Yeah, there isn't a whole lot more I can say about the flight experience other than it's freaking awesome. Ooh, that might have been cutting it a little close. It definitely takes some getting used to. It flies definitely differently than other helicopters, uh, than, you know, single rotor helicopters. There's definitely a big difference in how it flies. But it, like I said, it's much more forgiving, much more forgiving, much more easier to uh, learn. Um, I obviously have a ways to go, as you guys can tell. This is pretty outrageous. And, uh, you know, we'll be practicing with this quite a bit before we start doing the missions. I'm trying to just do sort of a slide around here. That part's a lot of fun. But it seems to be a lot easier to, like, for example, like here, orbit on a point here. 
That seems to be much easier to do. Still don't quite have it right, but I've got the idea. Ooh! Coming out of it, I didn't have the right idea. That was awful. <laughs> but it's an absolutely beautiful helicopter. They really did an amazing job with this. The sounds are really good. Uh, there are certain points, like for example, the APU start sound. Uh, I've noticed if you don't move to the next item quick enough, you'll hear the same sound sort of repeat itself over and over. Uh, so I hope that that transition gets smoothed out a little bit better. What is that? Oh, that's just a road. It's called a house, Mike. It's called a house. Well, what's cool is you can literally just fly it sideways. With much more ease than a regular helicopter, I guess, is the way I wanted to present that. Since all helicopters, you can fly like that, but... That is beautiful. And then you can very easily go hands off the controls. So, we are pitching up a little bit, so I'll just add a little bit of... Longitudinal trim here. Go to our map, because I am lost. Uh oh. There we go. I lost my base. I totally lost my airport. I'm lost in a CH-47. <laughs> There's a bunch of the missions that look really freaking cool. I will admit that I'm very excited about the missions. There's my airport. I think that's the airport. Yeah, that's the airport. I'm really excited to do the fire bombing one. I think fire uh, fire missions are cool. That is the airport, right? I really hope so. That's cheap. We're going to use the VFR map for a second. <laughs> Uh, that is one. That's not the one I took off from. Oops. Alright, well. As long as we get home. <laughs> or somewhere. <laughs> and then, like, get into a hover, too, is not bad either. Let's go ahead and simulate a pickup here. Forward speed down. <laughs> Come on. I want to kind of see how hard it is to manipulate everything while...
<laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm trying to just do hold the nose up. So I guess we would sit sort of like this, right? The door's open? Oh, I didn't open the ramp. See if I can do it. Okay, can't do that from the external view. Cannot do that from the external view. Okay, let's just uh, let's just get back in here. <laughs> uh, nope. Let's close those up. At least closing the doors and everything isn't bad. But I definitely cannot do that from outside. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. Oh, yep, got way more practice I got to get done. I will say I kind of wish the mirror would just go away. The mirror doesn't make sense. Like, even the reflection it's showing to me doesn't make sense to me. The mirror sort of just seems like, yeah, it doesn't need to be there. to this we are on one there we go right there that'll work oops got a little airport right up here we'll use that I think that's it right there actually I think there's a little airstrip oh and I can see the landing or pappy lights over there we'll use this one say we're dropping off some supplies Oh, no, there's nothing there. No, oh, yeah, yeah, as you can see, the runway lights, or runway thing, whatever you want to call that, path. And gentle. Bam. Brakes. Set the parking brake. Let's come out of VR. Not bad. And let's see, to shut down here, let's walk through our checklist here. Do, do, do. Shut down. Flight controls are neutralized. Parking brake is set. HCD is off. Uh, APU switch. I'm gonna go to, let's see here, it goes to the start position. What happened? There it goes. Okay. APU generator goes to on. Engine generator switches go to off. Condition levers. Both to ground. 
Crossfeed switch goes to closed. Where are we? I lost my spot. Fuel pump switch is all off. All fuel pump switches are off. Engine condition levers both to stop. No! Damn it. Ah, there we go. Alright, and where was I? Backup power switch goes to off. Fans off. Oops. APU. Off. Gen off. All lights off. And battery off. Obviously, we'd probably wait for the propellers to slow down, but... Oops, there we go. But, for you guys... Oh, forgot about the transfer, the hydraulic switches. But, there she is, folks. The CH-47 Chinook from Miltech Simulations. Which is really taking a long time to throttle down. If I didn't know anybody, I'd say they're still running. No, they're slowing down. Right? Yeah, okay. Well, I'm at full collective and they are. But I actually can't tell. I don't remember the last time it taken it these long taking them this long to slow down. There they go. There they go. Okay. It really does take that long. Huh. I don't remember that. Then again, I bounced out pretty early last time. But anyways, you guys, this is an absolutely fantastic helicopter. I highly recommend you guys check this one out. It's a ton of fun to fly. It's very relaxing it's very forgiving um it's one of those ones that you can really enjoy and just sort of go and tool around in uh without the stresses of some of the single rotors if you like a helicopter that you can just sort of pick up and go with and plus do all the cool crap like i said we're going to be checking out these missions probably do one every other day or so um and uh see what that's all about because that sounds really exciting to me and then we're going to check out some of the hoist operations and things like that so as always, guys, stay safe and healthy. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one.